Hey everyone, welcome to Otaku Talk. It's me, your boy, your host, OD, and today we'll be reviewing and analyzing chapter 1063 of One Piece. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to upload a review for chapter 1063 last week. Um, honestly, I was freaking... I don't know what the hell hit me. It was bad. I do not wish it on I will have never felt as bad as I did. Apparently it wasn't COVID, so who the hell knows. But uh, yeah, that's why I didn't get the video up. I was planning on doing it a little later, which I did do. And you know, I set up my shit, got everything up and running. And then a fucking course, I ran out of memory on my camera. So I only had the audio and no, uh, no video. I was just gonna upload the video, but I was like, such a bad mood and like screw everything. I apologize. For that. Um, I think I, I think it's gonna be it'll be fair if I review a little bit of 1060 in this, but I don't want to do. I mean, so anyway, without much further ado, let's get into this review. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I would. All right, so 1063 of One Piece, the only family I have. So before I get into it, I just want to touch base on a couple things that happened in 1060. First of all, super awesome chapter. I just want to say I'm loving sci-fi piece. I'm loving that we're going from fantasy to more science fiction. I'm a big fan of that. I know I don't know if some people are upset or not, but all I can say is I had a lot of issues with One. If you're one of the people that liked Wano, this isn't to rag on you. One thing I've learned about One Piece is people are going to like the arcs they like. Um, my favorite arc of all time in One Piece is Skypea, and a lot of people apparently really don't like that arc. So the real, really cool thing about One Piece is there's something for everyone. And I'm going to be real, like, after we left Wano, I was like, what the hell are we going to do now? I was excited to go to Elbath. I was like, all right, it's Elbath time, it's Elbath time, we're going to Elbath. And then, you know, it seemed like we were going to Sphinx and we were going to run into Marco again. And I was like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. Like, knowing Oda, it'll still be cool. But like, this isn't what like I'm in the mood for right now. Like, I really need a palate cleanser after that last arc. And this is shaping up to be such a phenomenal, like little mini arc. I'm super hyped. So, you know, they're talking to uh, the number two body of Vegapunk, right? And she tells them that she's not the main body, Stella. Not quite sure what the hell that means. But apparently the first main body is named Daka. Um, you find out that Vegapunk, in all his genius, has split his body into six bodies, right? We're already getting a lot of people comparing it to Naruto saying this is... <laughs> oh, a homage to pain. I really don't see it. Um, I kind of hate when, kind of hate that when a popular manga does something, it kind of is owned by that manga. Like so many mangas do similar things, and like unless it's like super unique, I don't think you can stake a claim to it. But maybe I'm wrong. But I mean, but um, you know, she's basically threatening the Straw Hats and is like, I'm not on your side. I work for the world government. I work for the so you need to you know cough up some money because. You know, science is not is not cheap. Uh, something I found really interesting during 1062 was the fact that there are numerous times uh, throughout the chapter where they kind of hit the point of science is super expensive. So I think it just kind of makes sense and checks out that you know, Vegapunk is working for the world um, world government just because it just makes the most sense for her. Um, I don't think she's a bad, he, sorry, he's a bad person. I just think that he loves science and the best way to get the resources and tool, uh, uh, finances, backing, do all the things that he wants to do. There was no other way than with the world government. So there you go. So anyway, we see some real, real cool gadgets throughout this uh, after we see these mechanized sea beasts, which I really can't wait to see how they become, uh, you know, how they're you how they become handy in the series um like i said lilith tries to uh 
strong strong arm the uh the straw hats i love the one line by nami the most selfish person in the entire series about hey it's already cold out here we don't need you to be cold and like rob us and i'm like really robin are you the person to be doing this because in her exact place this is the kind of character you are you would be trying to rob them too. so i found that to be hilarious uh luckily for lilith you know the first main body tells her let me know i i was really confused about this you think that vegapunk split himself into six bodies and that like those are all vegapunk or there are six like bodies of vegapunk but there's also still the original vegapunk do you think he's a cyborg do you think he's old as hell do you think he found some way to keep himself youthful there's many examples of really old people in this series you got your uh you got your Rylai, you got the uh got dr kareha from uh choppers uh choppers island all that stuff there's really old people in one piece and like normally the um the really strong people kind of retain their youth but wouldn't be surprised if using science vegapunk found his but anyway uh the first body the uh, the wisdom the wisdom body basically tells her hey still this is a yonko crew you shouldn't be fucking with them like this like they're gonna mess you up like they like look at look at Zoro, look at Robin. Like they're down for that action. They don't look shook in the slightest. So I would chill out with you know trying to threaten them. So that was cool. Kind of glad they're getting their respect. Not gonna lie to you, the Straw Hat crew doesn't really feel like a Yonko crew, and unfortunately, it just seems like that's just how it's gonna be. Um, simply because you know think about Shanks when we first met him. Now, albeit wasn't a yonko at the time but they were fun loving they were drinking you know they let some random no name uh mountain bandits you know screw with them and stuff so you know i guess you don't have to be this constant like comedy like just imposing force but i would like to see a lot more respect thrown on luffy i had snake a lot more you know uh what's the word i'm looking for? just uh option comes to them I want people to, you know, walk on eggshells a little. But, um, so that moment was cool. Also, another moment that was super cool was the fact that, uh, Zoro says something to the effect, hey, there's something I want to ask you. There's something I want to do for us. So I'm very, very, very curious what exactly that could be. Anyway, we move on to Luffy, um, Luffy, Bonnie, Jimbe, and Chopper. And they're on a different part of the island. They meet a different well before they get look before i get there uh you know they 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 see these holograms there's a hologram that luffy tries to gumu gumu no rocket through doesn't work they see some food uh they're unable to eat it which honestly had the most hilarious part because while all of them were mad opera was freaking livid that shit actually had me in fucking teeth how mad chopper was bro I, like like unless someone is abusing medicine like i've never seen him like mad to that extent so uh that was that was honestly super hilarious but we just get this really cool insight into like the kind of things vegapunk has been working on um we're introduced to um so anyway we have this uh giant robot show up the it has the six on it for the six vegapunk but later on in the um in the in the chapter we see that it's supposed to be the fifth so i don't know what the hell happened it didn't stages but uh something got messed up but um we meet this other version of vegapunk wrath um and you know honestly seems really cool um besides the fact that you know luffy tries to hit uh atlas and then atlas hits him back but looks really cool giant robot about the size of kaido apparently and honestly it's giving me massive astro boy vibes so i feel like you know we're gonna get a lot of homages to like old sci-fi but yeah, we, we get to see so much technology in this chapter from, um, you know, Island AC or Aircon, air conditioning. So that was super cool to see. There's a machine that can be used to, like, create food out of basic ingredients, can be used to make great food. That would be awesome. And, you know, they kind of answer the question of, you know, why don't we see these things scatter throughout the world? Um, and I, it's just, once again, it goes back to, there's just not enough resources. There's just um, not basically one. There's not enough resources to make these things. And also just because you have the blueprint doesn't mean you're able to make it. Um, that's something that Vegapunk definitely was complaining about, right? 
So I'm I'm very ecstatic to see what else on this island, what other gear, like the likes of like Frankie Top are going to be able to take and take and add to the straw hats. It's just it's gonna be so fun. And uh the last thing that happens in this chapter the last thing that happens in this chapter. Well, also we find out that um Uma is Bonnie's dad. So that was super awesome. That was super awesome. I honestly was in the camp of thinking that it was her husband. I thought that she was a lot older than we realized. And so I was in one of the camps of either it being her husband or her son. So that was really interesting, right? I know a lot of people were really disappointed. They wanted Bonnie to be a lot older than she appeared. A lot of people thought maybe she might be someone from the voice entry. I never had those thoughts, but I can totally understand satisfaction but i still think this is a great place to find out can't wait for bonnie exposition because she also talks about the fact about at the reverie so we're gonna get a lot of information both reverie wise sabo wise as well as you know just from like more information about kuma and her kingdom and stuff from her um Last thing that happens in this chapter is we see Zero again, we see the uh, long nose, I forget his, our boy, Rob, and apparently they're on their way to Eggman, they have to apparently drop off, or I'm assuming it's a repair, um, they have to repair the Seraph, uh, the Coop Seraph, apparently something's going on with that, I'm wondering if it's going to trace back to the fact that, I wonder if it's going to trace back to the fact that. Uh, Lilith said something earlier about not being able to get rid of the of the cyborgs. So I'm wondering if, you know, it's just not working the way that they like and they're trying to, you know. Now, another really interesting development is the fact that they're going to try to kill satellites. I don't know if it's just satellites or also, once again, I don't know if Vegapunk him, himself, the actual real Vegapunk, still alive but i'm like are you crazy why would you do this but it kind of just seems like the uh, world government are in the end game uh this is the end of the series at this point and they have everything they can need last fashion that they needed were the seraphs right and now that now they that now they are free to go about and you know declare war on who their war against and i think it's just simply dangerous for the world government to have you know this guy vegapunk that has all this information on them and is able to create all these weapons like if you if vegapunk is able to create weapons for them he can create weapons against them he can also let people know the weaknesses of the weapons that he's created so it's kind of a liability in terms of the world government right so i kind of get exactly where they're coming from but i do think that they're a bit of head ass fucking with vegapunk like this is the one that you expected like there's so much technology to bring into the world for y'all to get rid of him on what seems like such a like arbitrary right reason because you want to maintain your like power like once again the, the world government is honestly fucking up now are rob lucci going to be able to do this hell no the strides are on this island. happen gonna be real with you it would be nice to see, like a really powerful version of rob lucci but i just don't see it at this point where donko luffy is just leagues ahead of any competition he just beat Kaido. Now, say what you want about how he beat Kaido. Like, the fact remains he beat someone the likes of Kaido. I don't see Luke problem to him. I don't see Luke problem to Zoro or Sanji. I think the only problem, only person, like, that could, Luke could maybe possibly fight is Jim is Jimbe And even, hey, I think, power scaling wise, do we? It's a whole thing. Um can't wait to see. Uh, the last thing i'll say about this chapter was there there's another moment there's been two moments like where luffy does like of gear five his awakening his base form and so it looked like he kind of went gear four gear five in form. so i'm wondering why oda has been doing did that earlier i believe when they were in the cave drying off n one. so i'm wondering if that's oda's basic flexibility of his power the fact that he happen to power anyway that's that's enough of my like quick review of 1061 uh 1062 
let's get into 1060. So let's start with the cover story. Apparently, Pudding has been kidnapped. So um, I forgot to mention this earlier in my review. Um, I didn't talk about the 1062 cover story, but when we saw that, uh, Autoland is covered in ice. Honestly, I think we can all assume Aokiji did that shit. Now, why Aokiji did that, we have no clue. Now, on one hand, you can assume he's working for Blackbeard. Um, possibly the only reason I could think he would want Pudding is to um, is to help read the Pontyglyphs potentially, right? But I feel like Blackbeard would have other means of doing it. So who the hell knows? Um, honestly, I thought it might be a ploy because earlier on, I kept thinking about the fact that, you know, Pudding would, you know, try to do something to save the Vin Smokes. So part of me doesn't even believe that she was actually kidnapped. This is all some sort of plan to like end up back with the Germa so that they can maybe take her to be with Sanji. I don't know. I'm I'm paranoid. Oda always has me paranoid. That's just my two cents. I find this is going definitely going to be interesting. But yeah, we see Cracker absolutely frozen. He was absolutely helpless in, in stopping Pudding's kidnapping or what have you. If he was stopped by anyone, it would make sense. Start off this chapter where we left off before, and Atlas is leaving the Straw Hats, leaving the Straw Hats too. Uh, something that cracked me the heck up was was it Atlas or someone else? I think it was Atlas, and Atlas is wow, like like wow, you guys really eat a lot. Look at your bulging bellies, and all four, face all four of you have bulging bellies, and then. It's not even that big a joke, but Jimmy's like, mine was always like this. And I was like, oh. as a fellow big boy, that kind of hurt a little bit, man. That kind of hurt a little bit, but it cracked me up regardless, right? And so um, as, as Atlas leaves, you know, we get to see a little bit more of the really cool tech on this island. There's a recycle dog, robot thing, whatever. And so um, also there's a lot of creatures or um, I don't know, assistants or robots or droids or I don't, we don't know what these are yet. Ghosts! Ghosts! So I'm very curious as to their purposes. I would just kind of assume that they're like little helper bots that, you know, just do things here or there. That way, you know, Vegapunk or the, you know, the satellites of Vegapunk don't really have to worry about. But anyway, Luffy goes off screen, gets into some shit, and we discover this really, really dope like wardrobe clothes mate right and so luffy comes out in the cleanest gear i've ever seen and it is just the nicest in like retro cyberpunk like chic and he looks cool i love the fact that this is going to be his arc outfit i'm totally into it um even um bonnie and chopper and Jinbei uh, get into it, and I guess they they opt for the like the battle the battle suit uh, customization or whatever you want to call it. And I love the fact that true to like the genre of just like battle armor for women, like Dory Bonnie gets this super sexy battle armor with like absolutely no pants, and I'm just like Oda, Oda. <laughs> You're having way too much fun. Like, honestly, speaking of Oda having fun, you can tell he is enjoying drawing this. Like, you can tell he's he's had these designs in mind for a while. He's having, like, he, there's this air of playfulness and childlike, you know, wonder that's coming out of the pages right now. So, like, I think Oda himself was happy to get out of one. So, yeah, uh, Jory Bonnie has this cool, like, cy uh, cyborg fit. Uh, Chopper has this cool cyborg fit. Honestly, something I'm really excited for is eventually when, you know, uh, Frankie gets here and sees all this stuff, I'm hoping that he can adapt this because what I would really like to see is he adapts this clothes maker and at the end of the series, like all the Straw Hats have these super dope, like Donko crew outfit, swag, swag, like um, apparently they're super lightweight. I'm gonna assume that they're strong too. And so it's just going to be clothes that matches our new crew. That would be us. Uh, speaking of, uh, Jimbei opted out of the cyberpunk chic and is just rocking a 
suburban dad on vacation Hawaiian like t-shirt and I am absolutely fucking here. I'm fucking anyway Luffy's just chilling eating again literally like he just ate till he was like engorged and now he's like back to eating again man this Luffy, Luffy's the goat when it comes to food honestly like the only person that can give him a run for his money is probably like <laughs> And so anyway, while he's eating, he sees Kuma, right? And so he's completely prepared. He knows that like Kuma's gonna score up with him. And you know, Kuma immediately charges at him. Apparently, um, it's a Kuma police bot, and their crime is stealing food and clothing, which at the time they thought was which I think is hilarious that like, you know, the uh, Vegapunk Atlas didn't say anything about this being a problem left them and apparently they were doing illegal shit or maybe you know this this robot's just over programmed anyway it charges at luffy with you know lasers and all that and luffy is like okay bet and goes to like get the shit out of uh kuma with it looks almost like a uh gum gum uh, yeah I forget the name it's the uh like the gear four version of the elephant gun but um, he goes to hit Kuma with it, and Kuribani is not having having it and stops him eating. We see her emotional as hell, and she's like, he's the only family I have. And listen, Boo, I feel you. This is super traumatic, and I'm sorry you have to... You need to calm the fuck down. That's not your bad. It's like, first of all, there are so many pacifists with the face of Kuma. Now, I know this is easier said than done, but... Bonnie, baby, that's not your father. And, like, I want to say you should know that, but, like, I guess it's, once again, easier said than done to know. Um, There's no way she could possibly know that the actual Kuma is with Dragon on uh, whatever revolutionary island they're on. But, like, uh, it's really sad. But I really hope she doesn't cause too much of a problem for Luffy and the crew because we can't have a situation where they're being attacked by uh, Kuma Pacifi and she's getting in their way and stopping them from fighting. Like, I feel like it's gonna be one of those situations where a part of her really knows that, hey, and I'm not talking about like when she meets her dad, I'm talking about like just this, this is just your dad's likeness, but I don't know, man, ah. My heart goes out to her. I really hope that she back, especially with you know Luchi and the rest of the girl on their way with Seraphim. Uh, to be really bad. Last but least, we have the most hype part of the chapter. So we check in with our boy Law, and honestly, I know there is a bu there's a bunch of YouTubers that probably found out. I have no clue what direction he was going. Originally, Law thought he lucked out. He got the best, most straightforward route out of the rest of them. When they pulled pulled lots or pulled straws or whatever, like Law had a satisfactory like like conclusion, right? And I was thinking, was he the one that ended up actually getting Elbaf, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera? Unfortunately, Blackbeard was prepared for someone, whether it be Kid, Law, Luffy. To cross paths with him and unfortunately it was law and my boy law is just one of the most unfortunately tragically unlucky people in the entire series and it just sucks that right after he you know dissolves the alliance between him and the straw hats he is literally in a world of trouble so something interesting that we see and oda is just really having fun with his like drawing of females these last couple chapters. We see a gender bent law, and I know that's going to have the community like super hype right now, because. <laughs> mm. Let's face it, Law's already a cool character. Law's a chick is bad. Rule, what is it, 69 and all that. So. I can't wait for all the fan fiction, all the jokes that are going to come from me. But yeah. Uh, something I really didn't like is the way that um, Law actually gets rid of 
um the gender flip by the way it's not ivankov it's nothing like that apparently it is um doc q's ability doc q has the six sick fruit which allows him i guess to create or disseminate any kind of sickness and illness or illness and there's some kind of like gender fluidity chromosome reassignment virus or something that he can use i don't freaking get it but um law is able to um to counteract it by using his hockey now this makes perfect sense this makes absolute sense throughout the series there's been a bunch of situations where we're like why wasn't so and so affected blah 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 um i remember like the one that comes to my mind the the most right now is um i always used to wonder like why doesn't law use his swap this body swap this body it would be easy and we find out later on that the stronger you are the stronger your hockey you know, the less hacks your devil fruit and so i was like okay i like that i like that there's kind of you know a power throttling going on what i don't like is the fact that it happened afterward and i think clearly it happened afterward just so we could get the joy of seeing a gender bent law i don't like that it happened afterward just so that we can like, I understand that it happened just so we could get the benefit of getting a gender bent law. But typically, when this, you know, logic has been applied in the series, it's like instant. Like, like it would, it, it, like, would it make sense, for example, for Law to use his devil fruit and then, you know, Big Mom or Kaido or, you know, some other really strong person in the One Piece world to go, oh, yeah, I can use my hockey. And then, like, they forcibly, like, Put their body part back where it was like it doesn't make sense right so i do think it is kind of weird that like he used hockey after the fact and like his latent his um his his passive there we go his passive hockey wasn't enough to like stop the double fruit power in the first place so it's whatever it's whatever anyway we get introduced to i think about like three or four commanders of um blackbeard uh, Doc Q is there, Van Auger is there, and Jesus Burgess is there. And we get introduced to the Devil Fruits that they apparently have gathered since the last time we saw them. So Doc Q, like I said earlier, has the Sick Sick Fruit. Uh, Van Auger has the Warp Warp Fruit, which honestly, out of all the ones we're introduced to, is the one I'm most interested in. I'm wondering, can he warp himself? Can he warp items? Can he shoot a gun and then make it, like, um, make the bullet, like, disappear or reappear? I honestly am very excited for that um, ability more than any others. And then we have Jesus Burgess with the buff buff fruit. And we also have Stronger the horse with the mythical Zoan um, Pegasus fruit. Which honestly, I freaked out at first because I was like, wait a minute, isn't there already Pegasus? No, it's just Gonfall's bird um, <laughs> that ate the horse fruit. So it's a bird that ate the horse fruit. So he's kind of a de facto pegasus like a natural pegasus if you will um so at first i was, <laughs> I was super confused i was like is is gonfall's like bird okay yes gonfall's bird is okay this has nothing to do with him um but i just feel like it's kind of a waste to give a, a horse the pegasus fruit like it's kind of like you know giving a, a regular human human fruit so um and i'm not talking about mythical human or anything like that but I don't know it's just it's just a little bit weird to me like you could have just given stronger like a freaking like bird like a bird fruit similar to like how gonfall ate the horse fruit he could have been given a bird fruit like i don't feel like i feel like this feels like just a little bit of a waste on this damn dying horse but i digress um i'm not gonna lie to you guys i'm not the biggest fan i am really not the big they're devil fruits just because like it doesn't seem anything like unique to them um and also i'm kind of curious because we've never really really gotten to see gotten to enjoy the powers of like you know the commanders of uh oh you know, blackbeard's pirates like um like i think we've seen a little bit of jesus Burgess. i think we, we know about van august ability to snipe but we've never really really see them in serious fights and kind of like i kind of already assumed that Doc Q fought with like sicknesses, illnesses, almost in like a queen type way. So this is kind of weird to me. So it kind of makes me wonder, okay, how did they fight before? 
uh jesus burgess was already strong people in one piece are already super strong so it just seems super weird to me for him to just have like a strength fruit because it was like could have just made him as strong as you needed him to be from the jump you already seem like a massive luchador type person right um like i said before the only persons that actually was like okay that's cool and that adds a little bit to what they previously would have displayed is the warp warp fruit the rest of the fruits for these guys just kind of seem like an extension of the personalities that we knew. I already figured Jesus Burgess was super strong. I already figured that Doc Q, you know, had sicknesses he could probably make, like, probably trade his sick people or had. Like, I, I, I figured he was going to have, like, blue based fighting powers. But I digress. Um, can't wait to see this fight animated. Can't wait to um, see you guys develop more and can't wait to see. Uh, what like the rest of the crew has going so anyway uh it looks like blackbeard is after the pony glap pony sorry pony glyph uh rubbings of um that that law has um law seems kind of excited too because it's like okay you took the words right out my mouth uh you know whoever wins this uh you know winner takes all um, I'll take what pony um, pony glyph rubbings you have, or you'll take the ones I have. Whoever wins this will have uh, essentially all the pony glyph rubbings. So this is actually a very very big deal. This is a major deal. However, I don't know who the hell Law thinks he's hitting. Um, Law is literally the only capable and competent fighter in the entirety of his crew. Uh, no offense to him, he couldn't even fight a uh, Yonko by himself. Now, Luffy technically didn't fight one by himself till the end. Like, yes, yes, I get it. But you guys, you guys get my general point, right? You get my general point. And so, I don't know, man. I, I don't, I just don't see how Law gets out of this one. It would be one thing if it was him versus Blackbeard by himself. And even then, I don't think he's the chance. Even uh, Riley was kind of, you know, worried about fighting uh, fighting blackbeard by himself but this is blackbeard with like three other of his uh you know ender um against you know his lackluster crew there's he doesn't even have like a real like powerful second in command like uh kid has in killer um honestly let's be real beppo is somewhat useless he, he's done nothing ever since we he hasn't really done anything in wano i didn't even get to see like his su long form which i was super hyped for so Yeah, I really don't know who Law is hitting right now. I don't know where this bravado is coming from. I don't know where this confidence is coming from. I wish him the best, but as from from where I sit, those pony glyph rubbings are as good as Blackbeard's, right? But I look forward to be you know, proven wrong because Law is one of my favorite characters. So if there is a way to get out of this, I'm sure Law is the kind of person to find it. So anyway, I think that's everything that happens in this chapter. Um, if Blackbeard is the one that arranged for putting to be kidnapped, then he essentially is on his way to, you know, being the one to cover the one. Nothing stopping him. Have all the pony glyph rubbings. Gonna have someone looking like it's looking like a done. Anyway, this is great. I have never been more excited to be a one at this moment. Like things really go. I am feeling very sick very hopeful for you. anyway if you like this review please make sure to like share and subscribe this has been Taku talk i'm your host so have a great week take care